my invisible friends. Hello and welcome back to our mini-series dedicated to the electronic valve, the diode. This is the second video of this mini-series. And while I was getting ready for this video, I remembered the cartoon that I saw on a wall at school when I was an undergrad student. On that cartoon, there were two very famous numbers having conversation. There were pi and i, the imaginary unit, square root of negative one. And I was telling Pi, Pi, my friend, please be rational. And Pi responded, and you, I, get real. And it's time for us, you and I, to get real in this conversation about the diode. In the first video of the series, we spoke about that imaginary diode, the ideal diode, the perfect diode. A diode that when it's conducting, it is a perfect short circuit, and when it's not, it's an open circuit. That was then, and this is now. Let's talk about the real diode. We know that one thing is what we want, and another is what we get. It is the same with diodes. What we want is an ideal diode, that when the current is positive, the voltage is zero. It is a perfect short circuit. And when the voltage is negative, the current is zero. It is an open circuit. That is what we want. This is what we want. What we get is a device that is very good, but it's not that perfect. We get the real diode, the real solid state diode. The one described by that green curve there, uh, that is close enough, but not perfectly equal to the ideal diode. Let's see. In that real diode, when the current is positive, the voltage is small, but not zero. And uh, when the voltage is negative, the current is small, but it is not zero either. The symbol we will use for the real diode is pretty much the same one we had before, anode, cathode. The positive direction of the current is from A to C, and the positive voltage of the diode is when A is higher than C. The anode is higher than the cathode. The voltage is V of the anode minus V of the cathode. The relationship in the real diode between I and V is given by this exponential formula, the Shockley diode equation. In there, we identify the relationship is exponential between those two parameters. That formula was uh, obtained uh, by Stanford University professor, physicist uh, William Shockley. In that formula, we realize that if the voltage VD in the diode is very negative, the exponential inside the parentheses would be far smaller than one and the current in the diode will be approximately equal to negative I naught. So I naught, that constant, that coefficient that appears there, is the backwards flowing current through the diode when the voltage is negative through it. We call that the reverse saturation current of the diode. That current, in reality, is a function of temperature, but as long as the temperature is constant, I naught will be constant. In there, we realize that the current, ID, is a function of VD. As I've said before, I0 is a constant at constant temperature of the diode. N is a fabrication factor, is a number between 1 and 2. Depends on the diode. And VT is called the thermal voltage, and it is a value in volts. That depends on the temperature of the diode. And we will see actually what formula we use to compute VT. In many exercises in this course, we will approximate Vt with 25 millivolts. When the voltage in the diode is positive, that exponential is much larger than 1. And then we can approximate the current in the diode just with this simpler formula. That is the one we will use in this course. Let's summarize the elements we've seen so far in this course. In a different series, we learned of the resistor whose behavior is given by Ohm's law, V is R I, the inductor, V is L D I D T, the capacitor is I C D V D T. And now, just today, the diode, I is I naught. Let's repeat, the reverse saturation current of the diode multiplied by the exponential of the voltage in the diode divided by the fabrication factor N and the thermal voltage V T. We can solve for the current in each one of those elements, and from those formulas for the currents, 
we can introduce different branches as follows. The R branch, we've seen that before in another video of this series, the current in an R branch, which is a branch that has one resistor between the two nodes, origin of the current O and destination of the current D. The current there is, of course, the voltage in the resistor divided by the resistance. But the voltage in the resistor with that polarity is just V0 minus VD, the voltage of the origin of the current, minus the voltage of the destination of the current divided by R. We could do something similar for the inductor and define what is an IL branch and the same for a C branch. We could do that. Today, we introduce a D branch. The D branch contains one single element, a real diode between O and D, origin of the current and destination of the current. But that current is given by this formula. The current in that D branch is given as the constant I naught, the reverse saturation current of the diode, multiplied by the exponential of V of the origin of the current minus V of the destination divided by NVT. Let's use this newer branch in a circuit. Let's have a tutorial time, a recitation. In the circuit, the same circuit that we used in the previous video, the one we dedicated to the ideal diode. In this case, the diode there is a real diode and it has a reverse saturation current I0 of 50 pico amperes. The fabrication factor is 1.5, the thermal voltage is 25 millivolts, and we need to solve the circuit. The way to compute the thermal voltage depends on the temperature T of the diode. K and Q are constant, but T is the temperature of the diode in Kelvin. Who's K? Boltzmann constant. And Q? Q is the charge of the electron. In an exercise, in this course, in an exam, where do you find K and Q? Do you need to memorize them? Of course not. You go to the calculator, shift units up here, a menu appears usually in constants, and in constants you have um, several sets of constants. Let's go to the quantum physics constants, and there you will find the charge of the electron. That's Q. Q sub E, if you will. And in the chemistry set, up here, in position 2, you have the Boltzmann constant. And what about the temperature in Kelvin? Easy. If you know the temperature in Celsius, just add 273.15 and you get the temperature in Kelvin, and with that you can compute Bt, the thermal voltage of the diode. Now, let's work on that. We solve that circuit the same way you've seen me solve circuits many times before in different videos. Neural analysis, the modified version of it. Modified neural analysis, reference node, notes 1 and 2, or A and C if you prefer. And the branch currents, I chose them like that. Let's write equations. Yeah. In the calculator, the first thing I do, you say, what are you doing? Well, this is a CAS, a free open source CAS that is available to everyone on the Internet. You can go to the Hewlett Packard site and download this emulator. It's the HP Prime emulator. We are in CAS. As I was saying, there the first thing I'm going to do is define the constants with symbols, I naught, 50 picos, N 1.5, and VT 25 millivolts. And next, the next thing is I define the symbol for the current in a diode, ID. That is not a, a, an equation, mind you, that is a symbol. ID is defined, you see, colon equal. It is a symbol uh, that is represented by the formula on the right. I naught is multiply by the exponential of V1 minus V2 divided by NVT. Why are you writing that as a symbol? Because I will use that current twice in the case hill equation for node 1 and in the case hill equation for node 2. And I don't care for typing that in the calculator twice. So that's why I create a symbol ID. And with a symbol, I can write much more succinctly each one of the two case hill equations of node 1 and 2. Let's write case hill 1. Currents going in only 1, 15 minus V1 over 2,000. Currents leaving node 1, the diode current ID to the right, plus the current flowing downwards, V1 over 3,000. Case hill 2 on the right, currents arriving in the node, two of them, the diode current ID from the left and the current from the top, 15 minus V2 divided by 3,000. That is equal to the only one current leaving the node, which is V2 divided by 3,000. We solve that 
the set of equations k scale 1, k scale 2, for every one and every two, and lo and behold, uh, that those are the voltages of the two nodes. 8.6 volts, that is V1, and 8 volts, that is V2. With those values, we can compute what is the current in the diode and the voltage in the diode. The current, just type ID, because the calculator has defined in it, we did it, remember, in the previous page, has defined the way to compute ID once you know IV1 and V2. You click ID, and you get that the current in the diode is 337 microamperes, flowing the right way from 1 to 2. And the voltage in the diode is V1 minus V2. 0 0.6 volts approximately. So that diode is on, it is conducting, the current is flowing through it. It is on. It is not a short circuit, the voltage is not zero across, it is 0 0.6 volts, but it's working. And let's do another exercise that is very, very close to the previous one. In this case, all I've done is change the values of the sources on the top, 12 volts and 30 volts, to create a whole different situation. The solution is the same, reference nodes, not one, node, two branch currents, and we write a bunch of equations. And when we, we write the KCL equations, we realize that the difference is in those red circles. KCL1, the current going in from the top is 12 minus V1 in KCL1, and 30 minus V2 over 3000 in KCL2. We solve for them, and look what we get. We get that the voltages on the two ends of the diode are 7.2 V1 and 15 volts, and that is a V2. You say 15 volts. Hmm. You click ID, you get the current through the diode, 2310 to the negative 103. That is nothing. There is no current through the diode. And what about the voltage in the diode, V1 minus V2? Negative 7.8 volts. It is negative. That diode, of course, is not conducting. The diode is open. The diode is off. And that's how we solve a circuit that has real diodes in them using the Shockley simplified formula. Let's solve an exercise that is a little bit more interesting. This one has four diodes. We have seen it before in the previous video on the ideal diode. We know when D1, D2, D3, and D4 are on or off. We could have written all those formulas. Let me do that on the calculator. I have defined I0 and VT, and N is 1 for these diodes. And then I define ID1, ID2, ID3, and ID4. I define symbols for the currents in the four diodes, and I write those symbols because each one of those currents will appear in more than one KCL equation, and I don't want to type that much. They are defined. Look at one of them. The current in diode 1 is I0 exponential of V1 down here minus V3 on the top divided by Vt since n is 1 in this exercise. We do the same for ID2, for ID3, and for ID4. EVL, the evil equation, the KVL equation says that V1 is higher than V2 by the value of the source, 12 volts. That is good. And we write KCL equation for node 1. That says currents going into node 1, two of them. The current through the source, I call that IE plus the current through the diode D3, let me call that ID3, and the only one current that is leaving node 1 is ID1, ID1, there you go. I write KCL2 and KCL3, you may freeze the video and look at the equations carefully to uh, um, make sure that I didn't make a mistake. And then we solve the system of equations, and we get uh, the current in the source IE, and we get V1, V2, and V3 there. With them, we can compute the voltage in each one of the diodes, and look what they are. The diode 1 serve voltage is half a volt. The diode 4 serve voltage, this one down here, is half a volt. But the other two ones have a negative voltage, negative 11.5 volts. They are seriously off. So, there you go. Diode 1 is on, diode 4 is on, and the other two are off. Enough about the real diode. There are some limitations of this device. Of course, it's a physical device. It is not ideal. The limitations are semi-obvious. So if you increase the negative voltage too much, there, there, there will come a point at which the diode cannot stop the backwards flowing current from flowing. It will not be able to stop the backflow of current. The diode will break down. 
how much a voltage is necessary to break down a voltage, a negative voltage that will break it down. And that depends on the diode that you purchase here. In the data sheet, you can see that different diodes have different breakdown voltages, 50, 100, to 2,000, all the way to 2,000 volts in, in this data sheet that I have here on the slide. That is a lot of voltage, 1,000, right? So the actual green curve needs to be completed on the left, on the negative side. But we have to go really, really far there on that scale. Remember, that is 0 0.7 volts, that little notch there. So you can imagine how far left is negative 1,000 volts. So if we go there, negative 1,000 volts, uh, that little wiggle thing means off scale. All right. At one point, we will arrive at a voltage that we call the breakdown voltage, V, B, D. And at that voltage, current starts flowing backwards through the diode. When we multiply even the tiniest current flowing backwards times the huge breakdown voltage, the, the product of them will be the power in the diode, and that will be most likely more than the device can withstand, and it will go poof in a cloud of smoke. That symbol, I insist, represents that this drawing is of scale. My invisible friends, it seems I was a bit too optimistic, thinking that I could talk about the real diode in DC, in AC, the exact model and all the approximated models all in one single YouTube video. It is just too much. So I have split that original real diode video in three parts. This is the first one. This is the, uh, the Shockley model of the diode, the exact model, the exponential model. The next one will be approximated mod models of the diode, the constant voltage model, and the piecewise linear model. And then there will be another video dedicated to the real diode in AC. For now, I wish you all have a good night, a good night's sleep, and I hope to meet with you again in our next video.